ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you are welcome to the fourth series of the Sokoto Caliphate um, lecture organized by the Islamic Forum of Nigeria. Uh, the timetable before me shows that uh, uh, we have started at 4.30 and uh, we hope to finish by 6 p.m. inshallah. Um, the first item on the timetable is uh, the citation from the glorious Quran. And uh, it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Shuaib Mukhtar Shuaib to please open with uh, some verses of the Holy Quran as uh, part of our opening prayer. Dr. Shuaib, see with us. Uh, yes, he's with us. I don't know what's going on. Dr. Shuaib, uh, I can see he's muted. I don't know whether it's from the, from you or from him. Yes, I have uh, allowed him to admit himself, but it's like he's not with All right. So, Dr. Shuaib, please unmute yourself and give us some verses of the Holy Quran. Yes. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Inna alladhina qalu rabbuna allahu thumma istaqamu. ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها قَاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Masha'Allah, Alhamdulillah. Jazakum Allah khairan for that uh, beautiful recitation. May Allah put barakah 
in what we are going to do today. Uh, once again, I welcome all on board to the Sokoto Caliphate Lecture Series number four, organized by the Islamic Forum of Nigeria. The topic of today's discussion is intellectual resourcefulness and context matching as critical success factors in the our work lessons from Damfodio revivalist movement. Uh, I think five of the objectives of the Sokoto Caliphate lecture series are worth rehearsing. Objective number one is to project the contribution or to showcase the contributions of the Caliphate leaders to the development of Islam and their region. Number two, to revive a sense of history in the minds of our young ones. Number three, to learn some lessons from the life and times of our forefathers. Objective number four, to encourage good deeds among the present generation. And number five, to correct the misconception or misuse or abuse of some Islamic terminologies, such as caliphate, jihad, and even Islam. By and large, these terminologies are either misused by Muslims or abused by non-Muslims or misunderstood by both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. So uh, when we have this kind of intellectual exercise, uh, things will be much clearer so that uh, uh, so some lessons can be learned from the positive uh, heritage of our past leaders. Our speaker today is uh, none other than Professor Muhammad Babangida Muhammad, a personification of the Sokoto Caliphate leaders. In other words, it is uh, in many ways like the leaders of the Sokoto Jihad. For instance, the Sokoto Caliphate leaders were multilingual, meaning they were fluent in Fulfulde, in Hausa, and in Arabic. Professor Mahmoud Abangida is also multilingual. He's fluent in Fulfulde, in Hausa, in Arabic, and in English. They were multitasking. That is to say, they did many things over the same period. Our speaker of today, Professor Mahmoud Abangida, is also multitasking. He's doing many things over the same period. He is a teacher and a researcher, an administrator, an imam, a da'i or Islamic da'awa worker, a humanitarian worker, and a family manager. To explain this, Professor Abangida teaches and researches in the Department of Islamic Studies of Bayre University, Kano, in Nigeria. He is the current director Center for Quranic Studies, Bayre University, Kano, having served as a deputy director with the Center for Islamic Civilization and Interfaith Dialogue of the same university, having also served in the past as the provost of uh, Abdullah Adamu Polytechnic, uh, Misau, in Bauchi State, Nigeria, and a commissioner of religious affairs in charge of Hizba in Bauchi State. He is an Imam at Abu Bakr Sadiq Jumaat Masjid, Salary Quarters in Kano. He is a member of the Muslim Student Society of Nigeria, a Deputy Secretary Council of Ulama of Nigeria, Kano State Chapter. He is the Chairman of the Humanitarian Initiative, an NGO based in Kano that is engaged in uh, humanitarian services, particularly support to internally displaced persons. 
is also on the board of directors of the JAIS Opens and Widows Initiative, an Abuja-based humanitarian organization, uh, also working in the area of IDPs. I think the only area in which uh, Professor Babangida is not a personification of the Caliphate leaders is in the area of uh, family management. Professor Babangida is not polygamous. And I will be a witness, and this is uh, not out of fear that Madam Babangida is on the platform with us. I can certify that she's taking good care of him, just like four wives take care of their husband. Uh, brothers and sisters, it's my pleasure to hand the platform over to Professor Muhammad Wabangida uh, for his uh, talk. Uh, the chairman of this uh, sitting, the moderator, distinguished brothers and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I take exception in what uh, my brother, Dr. Dukawa, has uh, said with regards to personification of the Sokoto uh, jihad leaders. These are the people of the highest level caliber that one can think of. And we may never have people of their likes. Uh, but we always pray to follow their line and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our little efforts. The topic as uh, introduced by the moderator is intellectual resourcefulness and context marking as critical success factors in our work. Lessons from Sheikh Uthman bin Fodia's revivalist movement. Uh, the presentation is based upon four, on the background of four main points. One, that the assertion that the success of any da'wah activity relies heavily upon two things. One, building a strong educational or intellectual foundation, and two, undertaking the our work within the proper contextual framework. In other words, relating the da'wa to the actual situation or conditions of a society, or making the correct diagnosis and applying the proper and effective cure or remedy. We mentioned da'wa here in its wider perspectives, not simply delivering sermons, uh, delivering lectures, talking to people. Uh, Dawa has a wider connotation that whatever activity, whatever practical activity one undertakes for the promotion of Islam is a form of Dawa. Now, the second point is that the revivalist movement of Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi. Uh, in its ideological and intellectual foundations, as well as in its methodology and contextual application, is a reflection of the model that has been established, the example that has been established by the Prophet And this is the main reason behind the success of these 
reform effort that was carried out by Sheikh Uthman ibn Fudi, which led to the establishment of an Islamic caliphate, which flourished for about a century from 1804 when the jihad started practically to 1903 when the British colonialists uh, hosted their flag in Sokoto. It's about uh, 100 years, a whole century. Now, this is the second uh, point. The third the point is that Dawa work in Nigeria and in other places uh, is faced with many challenges, including incapable, what uh, Abdul Qadir Oda calls incapable scholars, incapable or pseudo scholars, or what uh, uh, Brian Suleiman calls venal scholars, who lack the requisite intellectual resource to promote a successful dawah, as well as the capacity to project a proper contextualization of the, their dawah work. These type of pseudo scholars uh, actually end up compounding the problems for the Muslim ummah. They make the task of reform and development uh, more difficult for those who are rightly equipped amongst the scholars to carry out the work. So they end up becoming like Kadangar and Bakin Tulu. Neither have they conducted the da'awa correctly, nor have they allowed or facilitated the way for those who are more qualified to carry out the da'awa work. The fourth point is that the Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi's da'awa presents an exemplary standard for our contemporary da'awa workers in Nigeria and in other countries in the Muslim world uh, for the successful attainment of the noble objectives of Islam. It is based on this that we should be able to draw specific lessons from this intellectual heritage that has been established by the jihad leaders with a view to charting an effective plan of action for the promotion of da'awa work. These are the four vital points upon which we are going to make this presentation. Now, going back to the title still, we have two central elements, the issue of intellectual resource or intellectual resourcefulness, and two, the issue of context marking. These twin da'awa principles have been central in the da'awa methodology of all the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in their conveyance of their messages to the various nations and peoples to whom they were sent, they had based their da'awa centrally upon these two or twin principles. The issue of intellectual resource, they were fully equipped with knowledge. They knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than anybody, uh, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in many instances, when people do certain things, which he has not done, he said, Ana a'lamukum billah, wa adkaakum billah. I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you, and I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you, because of the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired to, to him and all other prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why uh, amongst the qualities, the features or traits that are mentioned with regards to all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they are trustworthy, uh, al-amana, and they are truthful, as-sirku, and al-fitana, and that they are highly intelligent and the uh, they, they have good understanding. And this is the basis upon which they were able to have or to build a strong intellectual uh, resource. The community that was established by the Prophet Muhammad in Medina was a uniquely 
uniquely a community of knowledge and scholarship. Look at how the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, paid special attention to getting knowledge from the Prophet ﷺ, either in the mosque or wherever he is. They were always trying to get knowledge. And that knowledge that they acquired from the Prophet ﷺ enabled them, after the Prophet ﷺ, to go to various lands, various regions in the world to teach people to spread knowledge and later subsequently Muslims uh, continued to spread knowledge to acquire it and spread it and with that they were able to get ascendancy leadership the, the Khilafah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said of human beings Inni ja'ilu fil ardi Khalifa the Muslims became the Khulafah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth on earth, they were leaders virtually in everything. Generally, the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, strived in order to raise the intellectual levels of the people by redirecting their thinking abilities, enable them to recognize their weaknesses in the face of the power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing your position, your weakness, that you are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the highest being, the most powerful, the most knowledgeable. And this is why we are called variously in the Quran to ponder, to think, to reflect. And the Quran uh, praises those people uh, who ponder, who reflect. Uh, the Quran itself is a book for uh, those that are uh, those that uh, reflect, those that yatafakkahun, or those who understand. You analyze things, you look into them, you understand, and so on. Similarly, the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, were able to train followers uh, who also uh, continue to uh, promote that intellectual resource that was handed over to them by the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They learned the book of Allah, they taught it to the people, and they spread the message that was given to them uh, or handed over to them by the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that each and every messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had helpers, people that were his supporters, people that he had uh, trained, he had mentored in order to continue uh, with the message that was revealed to, to him. Similarly, the prophets, messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preached virtually the same fundamental teaching. And he Abdullah Malakum min ilayin ghayru. That was the fundamental teaching of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except that in certain aspects, certain branches, not in the fundamentals uh, of their teachings, there they differed. And this is at the important point that uh, we should uh, uh, take uh, note of here. Uh, the issue of contextualization. That although the various messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their messages agree on one central thing, that is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, they differed in terms of some of the branches, some of the issues, uh, because of the context, because of the situation that they found themselves in. Uh, generally, there was this problem of uh, polytheism, disbelief in Allah or worshiping other beings than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you would also find that uh, each community had certain peculiarities. For example, the people of uh, Saleh, 
their, apart from their dis general disbelief, they also were found wanting in economic uh, uh, aspects. Alu asalatu kata amuruka anna abu anna truka makane ya abudu aba una una fati amwali na manisha. They were telling him that one. This you are you are worship. This you are religion. Does it prevent us from doing what we wish with our properties? It is our money. It is our property. And how we acquire it should not be your own business. Now that was unique with them. They add under the mood because of the structure, the hefty structure that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala boldly. Uh, structure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them, they were so arrogant uh, and because of their ability to build uh, very strong physical uh, structures also, they felt that there was no one like them. The people of uh, Lut alayhi salam, they were wanting in unprecedented moral degeneration that was peculiar to them. Uh, it was not known amongst uh, peoples before them. Fir'aun, uh, he was apart from the feeling he, 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 he had that and uh, all that he was also uh, uh, arrogant, uh, he was a tyrant. So there was political and social injustice under his reign. The people of Banu Israel, they were maltreated. Uh, all this, among the Jahiliya Arabs, theirs was multifaceted from various aspects, moral, social, economic, polit political. There was this rampant decadence amongst the, uh, the Jahiliya Arabs. Now you see, that there are uh, there were peculiarities to each of these uh, nations, and so when a messenger of Allah comes, he invites them to the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone, and then he gives priority attention to some of the peculiar uh, misdemeanor uh, that they were involved uh, in. And this is a form of contextualization of their da'wah, uh, which, uh, which is a very good example for all da'wah workers or revivalist uh, uh, movements. And it was from this that Sheikh Usman ibn Fudi also built upon his methodology of uh, da'wah. With this background, we go to the main uh, discourse on Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi uh, and his approach in uh, disseminating or in establishing uh, a reform movement in Biladi Sudan, particularly with regards to these two twin fundamentals of intellectual resourcefulness and context marking. Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi uh, right from childhood, grew in a family of uh, scholarship. His father was a learned scholar. Uh, that was why he was called Fodi, uh, a learned man, the alim. Uh, and so he grew up to start learning uh, right from childhood uh, under the tutelage of his uh, father and then later uh, he went to other scholars to study various fields of Islamic uh, knowledge, as was then applicable uh, within the society. It was generally the system of education that uh, uh, was uh, derived from the teachers of the uh, Sankore Mosque or the, the, the University of Sankore in Timbuktu. And uh, it was the one that was spread all over the West African uh, region. Shah Usman ibn Fodi uh, grew up to be uh, very much interested in the seeking of uh, knowledge. He studied a wide variety of uh, books, of book, of fiqh, 
Quran, Hadith, Tasawuf, Arabic, and uh, he was certified uh, as, uh, as a scholar, given certification, Silsila, Ijaza, by a number of, uh, a vast number of scholars. He mentioned uh, the scholars that had given him, or he, he had studied under, and those that had given him Ijaza. But prominent amongst his uh, teachers were Sheikh Jibril ibn Umar, Jibril man jabar al ilahu bihi lana deenan hanifan mustaqim al manhaji, as uh, Sheikh Abdullahi said. And the son of uh, Jibril ibn Umar also, Abu Tawfiq, Umar ibn Jibril ibn Umar, and uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Raji, uh, he was their uncle, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Do, Sheikh Usman Duri and Abdul Rahman ibn Hamada, and uh, quite a number of other uh, scholars. Sheikh Usman ibn Fudi uh, traveled in search of knowledge, various uh, towns, various villages, regions in the uh, in Hausa land. Uh, in the Hausa land, then in its wider uh, uh, regional connotation, which is wider than what we have uh, today, including quite a number of uh, areas in Niger. Uh, the Jama'a, the group that formed around Sheikh Uthman, Uthman ibn Fodi, was essentially an intellectual assembly. People came to him in order to seek for knowledge, just as people go to other scholars in the region, just as he himself used to go to other scholars in the region. Now, students heard about him that he was a very knowledgeable scholar, and so they flocked to him uh, from various parts of uh, the uh, Hausa land, and in accordance with the traditional pattern of uh, teaching. Uh, they learned a number of books from him, but they also found something uh, peculiar with him, that this scholar appeared different from other scholars in the region. He had a mission, and they subscribed to that mission. And it was these students that were mentored by Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi that later came to be the leading lights in the jihad activity uh, across Hausalan. The vast treasure of written materials that were produced by Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi, his brother Sheikh Abdullah ibn Fodi, his son Sheikh Muhammad Bello, his daughter Nana Asmau, and uh, in addition to other uh, disciples like uh, Wazir Gidado Dalaima, uh, the vast number of materials that they had produced, uh, some said over 300 written uh, materials between small leaflets to voluminous uh, writings, is a pointer to the significance that they had attached to laying a strong intellectual source or intellectual resource for the success of their mission. That without uh, learning, without intellectual activity, there was no way that their message would be spread. There was no way that the reform activity could be successful. And therefore, he set about uh, building an intellectual partnership for da'wah with other people, with other scholars, felt that, uh, well, this is far beyond uh, the action of a single individual. He needed other scholars to go along with him, to partner with him. He tried to identify these uh, scholars, these like-minded scholars, and uh, he established good relationship deliberately good relationship with them. When he hears of any scholar uh, who is knowledgeable and uh, he's pious, he's sincere, he tries to reach out to him. He sends letters, greeting uh, to him and uh, uh, with respect. And he tries to engage him in a discourse about the position, the condition 
in Hausa land. Uh, and a matter of paramount importance that was to shape the future of Islam in the region required a united and systematic action by the ulama. And that was what Sheikh Usman ibn Qodi set to achieve right from the beginning of his uh, dawah. Sheikh Abdullahi in Tazin al Warakat mentioned that uh, a certain person called Sharif came from a distant land. And uh, he mentioned to them about a scholar, uh, Sheikh Mukhtar al Kunti, from the famous uh, uh, Kunta religious uh, family. And uh, uh, Sheikh Abdullahi, uh, on the orders of Sheikh Usman ibn Fudi, wrote a letter to Sheikh Mukhtar al, al, al Kunti uh, showing respect uh, to him and uh, that this is uh, what they are doing in the, in Bilad Sudan in the Hausa region and uh, they, 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 they want him to assist them with the prayers, with dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should come to their uh, assistance. Uh, that was a deliberate effort to establish links, to build bridges across uh, borders. It was also uh, a sort of a, a diplomacy that uh, from far distant lands, someone, a scholar of high standing, uh, also hears about the jihad leaders in Houseland and he has respect for them. Uh, Sheikh Usman ibn Fudi was doing that deliberately in order to establish uh, links with like minded uh, people. And building a strong intellectual base for effective dawah uh, required the combined efforts of the ulama of the time. Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi did not seek to tread the path alone. He appealed to the ulama of his time with cautious restraint, humility, and respect, urging them to stand up to the responsibility of Al Amru bil Maruf and Nahi and Anil Munkar. His interest was not that. Uh, they should come and owe allegiance to him or work together with him or under his banner. His interest was wherever scholars uh, were, they should undertake uh, dawah, they should undertake uh, preaching and uh, enlighten people about the teachings of Islam. Uh, in in Fakul Mysore, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Bello reported that uh, even as Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi continued his preaching, continued his uh, revivalist uh, endeavor, he still maintained strong relationship and contact with his own teachers, people like Sheikh Jibril ibn Umar and Muhammad ibn Raji. Uh, also, his uh, uncle and teacher, Muhammad Sambo, uh, Sheikh Abdullah, he mentioned that Muhammad Sambo, Sheikh Muhammad Sambo, used to attend the lessons of Muhtazar that Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi was uh, given. He learned it from him. And he went as if on a deliberate effort to continue with the mentoring. Even though now Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi is a scholar of his own uh, standing, and uh, uh, with people around him, Muhammad Sambo used to, to follow up to see that if there is anything that needs to be uh, adjusted, he advises him. And uh, uh, they, they continue that relationship. In fact, uh, it is reported that uh, Sheikh Jibril ibn Umar uh, even uh, gave, or gave him uh, uh, allegiance, gave to his student allegiance uh, in the da'wah effort that uh, he had uh, taken. Uh, despite the fact that there were some differences, very, very, uh, if I should say fundamental, there were, they were very significant differences between Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi and uh, his teacher, Sheikh Jibril ibn Umar. Uh, Jibril ibn Umar was a uh, very stern. He was uh, uh, 
he, he was adopting a very hard line posture, somehow similar to that of the Khawarij and uh, uh, the, 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 the other sects uh, in early Islam history, uh, feeling that uh, whoever uh, commits uh, a sin is tantamount to unbelief. And uh, that is uh, very, very fundamental. Sheikh Ismail ibn Fondi disagreed uh, with his teacher, Jibril ibn Umar, on these issues. But despite that, he continued to respect him and even to maintain uh, contact with him. Uh, he was the popular in Ila Thiyya, before Smith Dhani Ma Ila, Fa Ana Mawjin Min Amwaji Jibrila. And he relates that whatever he became, uh, it was actually as a result of what he had learned from Sheikh Jibril ibn Umar. Uh, one of the uh, issues, problems, challenges that Sheikh Usman ibn Fudi challenged, uh, faced was the challenge of pseudo scholars, uh, ulama usu, or incapable scholars, or worldly seeking scholars. People either who were knowledgeable, but they sold their knowledge, the other than mina dunya kalil, for the glitters of this world, or actually people who were not knowledgeable. Uh, some of those scholars, like uh, most of the Endoto scholars, uh, who were uh, simply after uh, making uh, incantations and uh, uh, sort of, uh, they, they were bokai, uh, so to say, uh, not real uh, scholars. Uh, the uh, the lakani of ba 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 uwa uba and uh, things of those uh, nature that were un-Islamic. Un now, this group of scholars or so-called scholars, pseudo scholars, were the main cause, were the root cause of intellectual stagnation in Hausaland because they didn't have the real Islamic knowledge. And so they, they, they could not give it to the people. They were also self-serving manipulators of the people's ignorance. They had no appreciation of the fundamental teachings and objectives of Islamic Sharia. They promoted and supported the unjust and oppressive happy rulers for their personal gains. They discouraged people from listening to voices of reform within the society. They constituted a very big problem. How, do you, how does Sheikh Usman Amfordio engage them? Or how did he engage them? How did he relate with them? On a personal basis, it would have been uh, easier for him to disregard them. Uh, but disregarding them had its own negative consequences for the community. <coughs> there were people who were recognized by the general public as being scholars. People respected them. People feared them, and people referred to them uh, on all issues. Now, coming in direct uh, head-on collusion with such uh, category of scholars would be a bit dangerous, because people would not uh, support him. So he felt that, OK, uh, let us see how we can manage them, engage them <coughs> in a peaceful manner with wisdom and good situation. And if they are able to mend their ways, fine and good. Otherwise, it would be necessary to expose their fallacies, their inadequacies to the people so that uh, it would be laid bear and people don't understand them. And that is what he tried to do in a number of his writings, in Siraj al-Ikhwan, in Najm al-Ikhwan, in Masail al-Muhimma. Uh, he tried to refute some of the uh, misconceptions 
of these uh, scholars. As a state, uh, the line of dispute was sharply drawn before, be, between Sheikh Uthman and Fodio and these people. They were not ready to mend their ways. They were not ready to give up the pledges, the glitters of the world that uh, they were enjoying. And so Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi was left with no option but uh, to directly counter their claims in a more harsher, in, in, in a harsher tone, uh, which was clear in quite a number of his writers. In his known of harm, means you wish our harm, he described these callers in the words of the poet, saying that they are sick at the time of charity. You will not find them. They are drowned in the sea of perdition. There is no one to call them to the right path. Well, they believe they are the scholars, so no one can tell them. While they slept at the time of getting the desired objects, what is our desired object? The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They sleep, they do not pray they, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would rise up at a moment of some great calamity. You would only see their faces in times of calamity. <coughs> They would only appear when there is calamity or when they are looking for worldly pleasures and when they are requested to come out to defend the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do not see them. The another aspect was uh, of his uh, approach was giving, giving priority attention to mentoring of uh, his disciples. Uh, he taught them, he inspired them with good example so that they would also continue to raise the flag of reform within the society. <coughs> now, we go to the next uh, issue point of the two twin principles that is context marking in our work. We have mentioned that with regards to context marking, we refer to uh, re re reflecting or putting things in their proper position taking into consideration the time, the region, the people, their peculiarities, and uh, uh, imparting or uh, really making uh, the, the, the practical uh, aspects of Islam within a particular society uh, taking into consideration uh, their uh, conditions. Now, one cannot do that without understanding uh, the society he lives in. You cannot change the society without understanding what needs to be changed. And you cannot change the society without knowing the culture, the, the language, the, uh, the background, the history, and everything about that society. What Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi tried to do <coughs> was to identify what is the problem. Just as a uh, medical 
uh, doctor would do, when a sick person comes to him, he tries first to undertake a diagnosis. Where in the body of Hausa land is the sickness? Where is the malady? What is our problem? He needs to identify that. What he called <clears throat> in his uh, verses in Fulful, the Boneji Hausa, the, the problems, the calamities of Hausa land. Now, he found out that Hausa land, the calamities in Hausa land were religious, social, political, and economic, multi dimensional. These problems, in general, <clears throat> were, might not have been unique to Hausa land because Biladi Sudan, in general, was faced with these problems. But within Biladi Sudan, each component of that region had its own peculiar problems. And he identified the peculiar problems of Hausa land. Now, one who reads the writings of Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi and uh, the jihad leaders, you would see how one would say copiously they uh, quoted from the scholars of, uh, of Timbuktu, the scholars of North Africa, uh, some of those who came to West Africa, like Al Magili, Imam Siyudi, uh, prominent scholars of uh, the Timbuktu University, like Ahmed Baba at Timbuktu, at Timbukti, uh, people like Ahmed Zarruf, Ibn al Haj and Maliki, and others, they, they reported, they, they, they quoted from them. But while they quoted from them, they were not quoting them in order to apply uh, uh, everything that these scholars had uh, mentioned or uh, given verdict on. Because they were aware that these scholars had their own conditions, had their own <clears throat> peculiarities, or the regions in which they live had their own peculiarities. <clears throat> and things have changed. Hausa land uh, had changed, unfortunately then, even to uh, a worst degree. Uh, was then, it was during the time of uh, people like Ahmad Baba at Timbuktu and the, the like. For example, Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi uh, quoted Ahmad ibn Ahmad ibn al Haj in his book, Al Kashfu al Bayan, the Asnafi Majlubi Sudan. And uh, where ibn al Haj was mentioning, uh, he declared that as of that time, the regions of Borno, Kano, Kazina, Sangai, and some parts of uh, Zalia were Islamic lands. So to say they were Islamic states because the rulers then were Muslims and to a certain level uh, they, were, uh, they were applying the teachings of uh, Islam. But Shah Usman ibn Fodi said, uh, after quoting uh, Ibn al-Hajj, he said that uh, the rulers of Hausa land in the time of Ibn al-Hajj were generally, uh, they, they were Muslims and uh, uh, they were not found wanting, particularly with regards to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the time of Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi, the rulers in Hausa land were only Muslims generally, generally not all of them, they were generally Muslims only in name because they partook in uh, idol worship and uh, they fought against the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, so Sheikh Usman ibn Fodi sought to identify the specific problems in Hausa land which were different 
from the time of the writings of Ahmad Baba, uh, Ibn al-Hajj, uh, al-Maghiri, and, uh, and others. And he identified uh, uh, three main problems in Hausa land, which were widespread ignorance and the failings of pseudo scholars and the injustice of the happy scholars. He, 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 he came to the conclusion that the most potent weapon would be mass education. Mass education in the context of the needs and requirements of Hausa land. The problem of people in Hausa land, teaching education to Hausa land, not all education, but the, 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 the fundamental education that the people in Hausa land needed was to understand the basic teachings of Islam. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Ikami, Salah, Ita, Isaka, Sawmi, Ramadan, how to perform ablution, how to perform Ghusl uh, al and things of that uh, nature. Uh, then to understand uh, the regulations of Mu'amalat, social relations, how to conduct marriage, uh, what is, who, who are the marriageable women, and who are those that cannot be married, uh, the law of inheritance, who is to inherit from who, uh, the issue of uh, business transactions, uh, what is lawful, what is unlawful, which meat is uh, lawful, which uh, drink is lawful, or which one is not uh, lawful, things of that nature. And then how to build and develop their spiritual uh, condition. This were what he uh, identified, and he went along to uh, urge scholars to establish study cycles, preaching sessions in every quarter, in every village, in every mosque uh, and town in the region, uh, so that there would be mass education of uh, the, the people. Uh, uh, before the uh, moderator starts uh, to draw my attention, there would be quite a number of things I would uh, uh, just uh, go over uh, because uh, the slides are many. In Nasiha to Ahli Zaman, advice to contemporaries, Sheh uh, Usman Ampodio directed uh, the book to, the, to his contemporaries, people of his time. In apparent response to the emerging issues of vital concern to the healthy development and survival of the Muslim Ummah. Uh, also his book, Nasa'ih al-Ummatul Muhammadiyah, he critically assessed certain new emerging issues which were not known before. The emergence of some groups, some sects, those that he termed satanic uh, sects, uh, al-Firaq al-Shaytaniyah, uh, and the dangers that these sects uh, pose to the security, peace, and welfare of uh, the caliphate. So he felt that there was need to write uh, specific uh, books uh, refuting their positions. Now, let's come to the lessons. What lessons uh, and what majors? What are the lessons for us uh, in the revivalist endeavor of Sheikh Osman ibn Fodi and his disciples? Our contemporary Muslim Ummah in Nigeria is faced with many challenges. The experience of Sheikh Osman teaches us the exigency of proper identification of these challenges. He mentioned that he tried first to identify where is the sickness. We must first of all try to identify what has gone wrong. Where? What is the problem with us? And what is the source of that problem? Then we analyze that problem and we address it within the context 
of our condition, of our own uh, situation and peculiarities in, uh, in Nigeria, uh, we see. We, we may not necessarily have to rely on some form of ready-made or customized sol solutions crafted outside the fold of our own context. Uh, we cannot have a customized solution to our problems. We have in our contemporary times scholars outside Nigeria uh, who are recognized internationally, but some of these scholars, or let me even say, most of these international scholars outside Nigeria do not appreciate our problems. They do not understand what are our problems. So if we take solutions directly from them, and then we come and try to implement it in the Nigerian context, uh, it may not uh, serve our purpose because it is, it, it is not, uh, it, it, it does not take into consideration our peculiarities, just as Sheikh Usman Ibn Fodi, uh, took into consideration the peculiarities of house land during this time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Mr. Speaker. Yes, sorry. Uh, hello? Yes, yes, yes. Time? Sorry, Mr. Speaker, the moderator is like, it's not with us. He said I should just inform okay. you that please you should be rounded up by now. Uh, maybe in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Very much. So uh, the, the, the need to learn from the Sokoto Caliphate in terms of literature development, they wrote a number of books. We need to uh, take that into consideration, uh, develop uh, a vast number of literature which addresses the issues of our time and which Sokoto literature, uh, which we uh, now advise, yes, we read the Sokoto literature, we reflect on it, but we are not also going to take everything about the Sokoto literature and apply it. We have to sift from it to see what applies to our present condition, just as they did it in their own time. They took the books of other scholars and uh, they put it to reflect their own uh, conditions. We also need to undertake uh, uh, a uh, a concerted effort to enhance scholarship and educational empowerment of Muslims in Nigeria in the most comprehensive uh, form. Uh, contextualizing jihad uh, is very, very important that within jihad, within regulated guidelines, is no doubt a well-established and recommended endeavor in the struggle to promote and preserve Islam. No doubt about, about, about on that. That the Shea who prosecuted a jihad mission must be considered within the context of his own circumstances. A unilateral declaration of jihad in the context of present day Nigerian situation would be rash, misplaced, improper, and ill conceived in the light of the objectives and principles of Islamic da'wah. The failure of some elements now to contextualize Islamic injunctions and the experiences of our predecessors might have accounted for some of the security challenges that we are now facing. Uh, the need to uh, adopt a common front from the experience of Sheikh Usman Ibn Fodi, where he reached out to scholars of his time. We also need to, uh, to do that, uh, establish a bond of brotherhood, togetherness, working relationship, uh, and uh, put aside the misunderstandings or differences on issues that are not fundamental. Uh, we maintain our focus uh, on what uh, uh, we do, not to allow ourselves uh, to, to, be, to, to deviate uh, by the diversionary measures that are being uh, put on our way by serious scholars and uh, other people with deviant views and uh, uh, positions. Uh, Masha'Allah. Masha'Allah.
Jazakumullah. I, I, I hope you have, you have learned it, prof, prof, Professor. Assalamu alaikum. Dr. Nabil. Professor Bengida, are you done? Are you through? Assalamu alaikum. It's like uh, he's not Yes, it's like he has lost. Uh, yes, but he's back now. Maybe right. he gives him some time to wrap up. Okay. Professor, are you back? Are you with us? <laughs> Maybe before uh, our speaker joins us, um, let me quickly uh, highlight some of the important messages he shared with us in his presentation. Uh, alaikum. There are three companies. Is he back? No, okay, you can't hear me. You can't see your face, sir. Hello, the screen. Doctor. You just have to lift it up a little bit. I see. You. I see. Okay, I'm through, yeah, and um, I'm with you. Okay, my. So, if you can wrap up in one one or two sentences, please, Professor. Because uh, I am through. I, I, I have concluded my position, my presentation. Mashallah, thank you so much, yes. for the very stimulating presentation. I uh, and um, I thank you for the modesty in objecting to being a personification of the uh, Sokoto Jihad or Caliphate leaders, but. Uh, I still want to encourage the young ones that they should aspire to be like those great men <laughs> of the past. Uh, and uh, one, one step towards that is, to, is for the young ones to be like uh, Professor Muhammad Babangida. And then, inshallah, we may have a reincarnation of the Sokoto Caliphate leaders. Uh, in our own generation. Now, uh, I was about to summarize the presentation that the three components are the issue of intellectual resourcefulness, and in which, um, to my understanding and my summary, Professor Mamun Wabangida is saying uh, that our workers need to learn that uh, a basic requirement or some of the basic requirements for a successful da'awa, uh, one, knowledge and scholarship, two, truthfulness, three, hard work, four, partnership, five, unity of purpose, and six, clarity of vision. Uh, he also talked about uh, context matching, which, um, uh, which I captured two, that is understanding of the social media and uh, consideration of uh, contemporaries, one's contemporaries in the da'awa work. Uh, he also goes ahead to mention specifically that some of the lessons to be learned include proper identification of the social malice, that is the, 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 the social illness or problems bedeviling the society analysis of the issues and addressing them, as well as contextualizing the issues. I like that conclusion that any rushed action into declaring um, unilaterally either um, any form of social change, as a matter of fact, is ill-advised, that there is need for all these factors to converge 
before one goes into action. Thank you once again. And um, I, I think it's now time for questions and answers. I don't know whether some people have raised hands. I can see uh, some of our elders on the platform. Uh, maybe if I take one or two questions, uh, I may, I will come back to people who raise their hands. Um, no, I mean, I will come back to, go to, to our elders on the platform um, if I take one or two questions. But before taking uh, or opening the floor for questions, Professor Wabangida, there is one uh, Salihu Lawan who wrote on the chat that uh, the endotus scholars uh, have contributed towards scholarship by way of writing a number of literature. Um, so there are those of them who were pseudo scholars as you described them, but there were those who made positive contributions. I don't know whether you have seen that uh, or whether you would want to respond to that uh, before we take questions. Um, and, and again, before then, uh, let me identify three people. Adeni Shoyemi, um, Abu Bakr Nazifi, and uh, Jamiu Yekin. I think I will take them after you respond to, to Sali Hulawan. Professor, are we together? Professor, are we together? Professor Babangida? Oh, it's like he has lost the network again. Um, then let's listen to some people. Maybe it is contribution, not necessarily questions. Um, I have mentioned three people already. So one, Adeni Dayemi. Uh, Dr. Nabil, please unmute Adeni Shayemi. Brother Adeni. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah. Yeah, I only want to ask um, what are the efforts of the ulama and the scholars, particularly from the northern extractions, towards unifying with others to art in the southern part of Nigeria towards eradicating some of these evils. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay, maybe when. That's my question. Uh, uh, when the speaker joins us, I will rehearse the question to him. Next, Abu Bakr Nazifi. Um, Dr. Nabil, unmute Abu Bakr Nazifi and even Jamil Yakini before him, um, I mean, after him. Abu Bakr Nazifi, are you with us? Please unmute yourself. And yes, we are unmuted. Abu Bakr Nazifi. Then Jamil Yakini, he, he is, is unmuted, I can see. So please, over to you. Jamil Yakini. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, listening to you. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be part of this uh, great um, uh, discussion this evening. I think it's welcome Allah khaira to the organizers. Wait, wait, yeah. My first question is, as we all know that Sokoto Caliphate is like a symbol for all the Muslims in Nigeria. This kind of program, why can't you extend it to other parts of country. Yes. Let's maybe the regional offices in the south, in the east, to have kind of program like this, mm -hmm. where we have scholars, the mm -hmm. Nigerian scholars, the real scholars, mm -hmm. that would discuss the issue concerning the Nigerian Muslims. That was my first question. Yes. 
The second one is the issue of the, in the paper mentioned by the prof, prof uh, Mohammed, uh, uh, Professor Sir, that in the book, later the early scholars in Nigeria discovered the Al-Firqatu al Shaitaniya, the satanic groups. When we look deeply now in the country, we see some people parading themselves to be Mujahidun, to be Hadu Jihad, that clean people like Boko Haram. Mm. Since this day, what is Calfit doing to cope this insurgency? It gives sleepless night. We are so much concerned about these people. Are you with me? Yes, yes, of course. Hello. Yes, mm -hmm. we are listening to you. And what is yeah. Calfit is doing? What is Calfit doing in coming this insurgents? And as it is known, if insurgents should last for like 24 hours, there are a lot of things, you know, attached to it. Please, what can or what has the Calfit been doing in coming this insurgents in the country? Mm. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, okay, I, bef I, I think before I take my last question from Ahmad Awal, let me quickly respond to your second question, or the first question. Why, why not extend the program to parts of the country? I, I think this uh, Zoom meeting of a thing has taken care of your concerns. Um, when we are yeah. in programs on Zoom, you know it's it's a worldwide uh, thing. Mm -hmm. That's why from Southern Nigeria, and you are together with us. So, um, but nothing stops other uh, Muslim organizations um, in Nigeria from organizing mm -hmm. anything. Uh, now uh, we are on Zoom and it's not limited to any part of the country. In fact, it's not limited to Nigeria. Um, uh, there are other people from outside Nigeria who are together with us. Brother uh, um, um Dr. Dr. Nabil is Professor Babangida back. Okay, let's take the last question. If he is unable to overcome his uh, challenges, then perhaps I will invite uh, um, uh -huh. Babai. So, so, yeah, uh, uh, moderator, I've been with you. I've been unmuted. <laughs> okay, you, you are muted. muted. Now you I'm with muted. you. Uh, yes, I had been with you. Only that. Uh, Mashallah. So if you have um, listened to the questions raised, um, maybe I, 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 will take the, I will take pardon from Muhammad Awal um, that uh, due to time limit, we'll have to listen to these two questions that are raised. And then uh, any other person who wants to speak can send a message quickly before the end, the, the end of the meeting so that uh, through the chat, we shall compile the questions and then perhaps find ways of uh, reaching each other uh, and addressing our concerns. So, Professor Wabangida, would you like to respond to Shoyumi's question that uh, what efforts are the ulama um, making uh, in southern Nigeria with a view to, um, to enlightening Muslim brothers there regarding the heritage of the Sokoto Caliphate? And then Yakini's, Jamil Yakini's question on uh, why not extend. Okay, I've answered that one for him. But uh, what uh, can be done or what has been done to curve the current insurgency, which is um, done in the name of Islam? And that's why during my introduction, I said there is a lot of misuse and abuse of uh, some Islamic terminologies. So, do you want to respond to these questions quickly? Okay, Mashallah, Bismillah ar Rahim. Uh, there was a, 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 a comment by uh, one of our brothers on the Endoto uh, scholars. I fully agree with him that uh, not all the Endoto scholars were uh, pseudo scholars. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know whether maybe my, 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 my words uh, mm -hmm. depicted that, but I do agree with him that uh, there were uh, amongst them people who were uh, scholars of uh, good standing uh, and the general uh, trend then uh, of the pseudo scholars was also there very rampant uh, in Endoto and that was why uh, they generally opposed the jihad of Sheikh Usman ibn Fudi. Uh, I didn't hear the, the uh, question of uh, the second brother, I think it's Adeni, probably is the one that you mentioned about uh, efforts being made in southern Nigeria. Uh, I, 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 I don't know, I may not be in a position to state that, uh, but uh, I do know quite a number of uh, Islamic uh, organizations uh, based in southern Nigeria. And uh, also, of course, uh, uh, those that are national, MSS and uh, uh, the, the others, Nakomyo, uh, of which the whole basis of these uh, organizations was how we can reflect upon the teachings, uh, the heritage of uh, the Sokoto Jihad in order to uh, implement uh, reform in our society. Uh, the question by our brother, Jami Yekini. Uh, and uh, his concern about the uh, Boko Haram. Uh, I, I seem to hear him say what the country is doing. Uh, uh, that is for the political analyst. But uh, I thought he, he was asking what we as uh, uh, Dawa uh, workers should do with regards to the, uh, this problem, the challenge of the insurgency. And uh, quickly, I would say one, uh, we have to undertake uh, a program of uh, counter narrative. We counter the narrative that is being promoted by these uh, insurgents. We come with the correct Islamic teachings uh, concerning jihad, concerning Islamic state, concerning the implementation of uh, Sharia uh, through lectures through writings through uh, conferences uh, you recall uh, last year there was a conference uh, that was held here in kano on the boko haram insurgency and the effort was uh, towards uh, countering the dominant uh, narrative uh, we should undertake all efforts towards promoting uh, peace and supporting uh, all efforts that are being made in order to uh, and the insurgency. Uh, I saw a question uh, in the chats, uh, whether there was any woman scholar who participated in the Dawah during the Sokoto uh, revivalist uh, effort. Yes, there were, were so many, so many women. Uh, popularly, always when uh, a woman is being mentioned, uh, mm. the People Manasma. make mention of the daughter of uh, Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodi, that is uh, Atma. Uh, yes, because uh, she was a leader uh, of the Entaru, a movement, uh, a group uh, for Dawa by women uh, who would come to her and uh, she would teach them about the basics of the teachings of Islam. They would memorize them generally in the uh, form of a poem and uh, uh, they, they, they are termed as jaji. They would go back to their various regions uh, to impart to people what they had learned from Nana Asmau. So always uh, the, the issue does not stop only at Nana Asmau. There were so many, so many hundreds of women that uh, uh, were engaged in the Dawa effort. Even before the jihad, the mother of uh, Sheikh Uthman ibn Fodio, and uh, so many, they were, they, 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 they were scholars uh, who taught their children uh, about uh, the Islamic uh, teachings. Uh, I think these okay. are the questions. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think I'll have to apologize to Baba Dini, Dr. Salahuddin Yusuf, uh -huh. due, to, due to time limit. Uh, or, or should I give you one minute? If you can say our salam in one minute. And uh, yes, please, um, Dr. Nabil, unmute 
Unmute Dr. Salahuddin. He should be able to unmute himself, please. Okay. Um, uh, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Thank you so much for the honor given to me. I wish to congratulate Professor Bawangira for that presentation. Honestly, one of the things I learned was the fact that Usman ibn Fodio traveled out of his enclave to acquire for knowledge. I found that very interesting, very, very informative. And the fact that he got in touch with other scholars, not for the purpose of requesting them to pay allegiance to him, but in order that they come together to promote revivalism. These are very interesting information. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you, including the presenter and the organizer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Now the final thing, but of thanks and closing prayers from Professor Salih Sushehu, the Executive Secretary, Islamic Forum of Nigeria. Professor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, on behalf of the Islamic Forum of Nigeria, the organizers of this uh, lecture series, I wish to express our thanks and gratitude, first of all, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with, with whose leave and permission this was able to conduct it and all other uh, good things. May I also thank the presenter for this wonderful presentation. I wrote at the beginning that Alhamdulillah for the first time, today we were able to start the presentation, the lecture, right on time as scheduled, around 4.30 or 4.31. I hope we will have it like this in subsequent presentations, inshallah. So we are very much grateful to the presenter for this very enriching presentation. As he was making the presentation, I was increasingly being convinced that Alhamdulillah, we're going to have a book from this series as uh, His Eminence Sultan has said that if we finish, we can put the presentations together and let it be published as a book. Uh, Professor Babangida will only add a few things to come up with a very full pledge paper from these slides. For Jazahullah Khairan. Let me also thank the chairman or the moderator, Dr. Saeedo Ahmad Dukawa, for effectively uh, you know, handling the session. Uh, actually, he was right on time. And Alhamdulillah, he hasn't had any disappointment with the network today as the moderator. Maybe, yeah, he went and said double. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Let me thank our able hosts, Dr. Nabil and Brother Mustafa. They are always up and doing and other uh, staff that are working with us. And all the participants that have participated uh, from the beginning to the end, I could see that we were able to retain up more than a hundred from you know up to the end. So that is very encouraging. But most especially, uh, Dr. Salahuddin Yusuf, who is also always physically with us and now also virtually always with us. So I would like to let the cat out of the bag by telling us that let everybody wait for the presentation of uh, Dr. Salahuddin, who is in his own right, a specialist on Sokoto Caliphate. And uh, inshallah, his presentation will come towards the end. And it will be khitamu hu miskun. Inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. So thank you so much to all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's the end of the meeting.